tarts, pies, custards, cake. Welcome to Baker's Dozen. Tamara and Bill, it is so good to talk to you. I've been really excited about this. Uh, Tamara, I used to watch Sister Sister every day after school, so I've been a longtime fan. And Bill, it is so good to meet you. I have not baked in probably 20 years since I was a kid, but after this show, I had to do some blueberry muffins to start. Wow. I'm impressed. But this was just a tease to fill me up because I didn't want to eat the main presentation. And keep in mind, I am more left brain, so I'm not okay. very creative. What? But I tried to do the Baker's Dozen logo with that's Hulu. True. Oh, wow. Yeah, let me. Oh, that's so that's cool. So cool. Oh, thank you, John. Yeah. We're yeah. Honored. So yeah. my first question is for you, Bill. And I know a lot of people at home will be wondering this. How do we get the icing to be so smooth? Because that's what makes the difference between a professional cake, in my opinion, and a more homemade looking cake. The simple answer is temperature. Like <clears throat> usually icing in the refrigerator stays kind of the way you put it. But room temperature, no matter what, if you're using butter or um, or cream cheese or or any kind of frosting, usually, you know, temperature is going to make it droop. So try to leave it in the fridge till the last minute. Okay. Okay. That's, that's great to know. I had no idea. Uh, Tamara, after watching and filming this show, I know there had to have been a dessert because I know you bake at home. What was the first dessert that you saw? And you're like, all right, I'm going home. I'm trying this. Oh, geez. There's so many, but there, okay. So the one thing I cannot get out of my, my, my mind is the ube. It's that purple yam i i've made you know sweet potato well the yam you know around thanksgiving you know baking that putting some you know marshmallows or whatever on on top of that but seeing a purple yam and how one of our bakers in he he made it out of a cream puff i wanted to learn how to do that like so because only because i want to eat it i want to eat it like every day <laughs> Bill, do you know I still think about that damn thing? Oh yeah, it was delicious. I, uh, I want one so bad. <laughs> so yeah, I want to learn how to do that. It's an ube. It's a creamed uh, donut, but but with ube, with an ube filling. Gotcha, got it. Bill, what is it about this show, Baker's Dozen, for you that sets it apart from other cooking shows? Well, um, kind of like the courage of the people who, who during pandemic, like learned a new trade in many cases, whether they are professional or amateur, they took their time. Um, they did a lot more than I did in the pandemic. Like some people learned a new language or a musical instrument. These people learned baking, basically. And I think that's those kind of human stories are what really drive the show in many ways. And um, the images... Uh, there's there's so many images of cakes in this show because there's three rounds of competition and they produce something new each time. So um, it's sort of the aesthetics of those beautiful cakes, which uh, which I think really make the show set apart. Tamara, what advice do you have for people that are about to watch this show? Because I definitely think you need some type of treat or something in front of you going into this because y'all are going to have a lot of people watching this show probably like at 10 o'clock at night right before they go to bed and then they're going to end up staying up all night cooking all night and baking. So I, I know, right? Going. So I think it's inevitable and I feel so inspired, John, that you started, you know, baking again. So maybe what I would do, I would have like a, a you know just have a paper or pen or your phone make some notes because you know you're gonna want to bake after this and then you know possibly you know re remake it or put a little yeah. uh, your own spin on it yeah and so it really goes fast the show goes very yeah, fast so you might want to take notes yeah yeah and I, I like how it changes each episode like you have new contestants coming in uh, new designs, new challenges and all that. So that's one of the things I really enjoyed about oh, the show. Mm-hmm. Bill, I got to ask, what was the most challenging dish while you were at the White House that you had to serve? Because I know you mentioned in one episode that you ended up being short on one dinner and it actually ended up working out. But did you have a dish that may maybe an odd request or something that ended up being really challenging for you to make? Yes. Well, thank you for bringing up that anxiety producing moment. <laughs> uh, uh, the most 
Well, the big challenge is uh, at Christmas time, there's many, many guests who come to the White House. The, no matter what the administration, they host like thank you parties in December every single day, up to a thousand people. So, I mean, just producing enough food is one thing. But the real, um, what I remember the best and one of the most enjoyable parts was the gingerbread house, which is a, sort of a, um, a very detailed representation of a gingerbread house. Most often we would actually choose the White House to represent down to great detail and the, the acanthus leaves next to the windows, the, the gated uh, front. Mm -hmm. So that was the biggest challenge. And it took about two months to make. 